In this brief video, I'm going to give you an overview of some of the different financial statements. Uh, there are three primary financial statements that we see very often and very frequently, I should say, in accounting. And these fell, fall under the umbrella of what we refer to as financial accounting, which is accounting that's meant to address the needs of external stakeholders, much like investors, suppliers, and other people that have an interest in seeing that the company perform at a certain level but don't necessarily work for the company. And as investors, we obviously want to be able to gauge the financial performance and health of the company. And there are three primary financial statements that allow us to do that. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to provide a simple overview, an introduction if you will, to some of these statements. Uh, we're not going to go into any great detail line by line, uh, that will be done later on. But as for right now, I just want to ensure that there's a basic level of understanding regarding what the purpose of the statements are and generally what they include. Uh, so the first common financial statement is what we call a balance sheet. A balance sheet summarizes a firm's financial position at a certain point in time. Meaning that if you were to look at the top of the balance sheet, usually there's a date there. And so that date signifies as to what time frame that balance sheet is accurate. And so it's not uncommon for balance sheets to be done on a, on a quarterly, maybe even an annual type basis. And so if you find the date says December 31st, 2012, uh, what that means is as of that exact point in time, those were the assets, the liabilities, and the different owner's equities that the, that the company actually possessed. And so if you were to look at that same balance sheet, maybe two or three months later, you're probably not looking at what actually is going on within the company. And so you do want to pay very specific attention to that particular date because once again, the balance sheet does not give you financial position over a, uh, a specific period of time, but a specific point in time rather, meaning that it does change on a daily basis. And so you do want to take that into account. Uh, the balance sheet is essentially uh, created around what we call the accounting equation. And the accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus what we call owner's equity. And these three items, uh, or liabilities and owner's equity rather, always will equal assets. Uh, and the reason is that companies generally have two funding sources. Meaning they have two ways of generating uh, capital so that they can in turn use that to purchase supplies, purchase equipment, purchase products to actually sell, pay employees. Uh, they either have liabilities, which means they go into debt, so they incur maybe a bank loan of some kind or some other note payable, uh, or they go to investors or use retained earnings. And so if they were to go and issue stock in the open market, they could use those proceeds to then go ahead and maybe pay for additional equipment, maybe it's expanding production facilities, whatever the case is, right, that the company decides what to do with it. Uh, but those are generally the two sources of generating funding so they can go ahead and put that towards operations. And so assets will always be equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Uh, now assets are things the company owns that have some type of value. And so this can include anything from cash, it can include equipment, uh, inventories, right? Items that you have purchased that you're waiting to, to sell, they have some type of value. Uh, also can include intellectual property, so copyrights, trademarks, patents, uh, those sometimes can be very difficult to value, uh, but they certainly do have some type of value because they prevent other companies from essentially doing exactly what you do or offering products or services the exact same way that you do. Now liabilities, 
are money that you owe to what we call non-owners. Non-owners referring to people that obviously don't have an interest in the company, uh, at least aren't considered to be shareholders. Remember that usually uh, a lot of companies are uh, C corporations and so if they are then the owners are essentially shareholders. Uh, and so this would refer to any type of outside institution, whether it be maybe a bank, credit union, uh, those are common non-owners. Uh, could be if they issue bonds, right? It could be bondholders as well. Uh, so money that we receive from those particular types of financial transactions would essentially be a liability. Now anything left over is considered to be owner's equity. And so this is money owed to owners. Uh, so anything left over after liabilities is essentially owner's equity. Uh, and so this is money owed to owners and so owner's equity or people that own have stock in a company have what we call a residual claim on assets. And what that means after all of the individuals that hold liabilities, after they're made whole, anything left is essentially owner's equity. Uh, and owner's equity usually takes the form of money that's issued for stock offerings. So if you purchase stock of a company uh, during an IPO, of course, not during a secondary market offering, or uh, in the secondary market, I should say, rather. Uh, also includes retained earnings, right, money that's was once profit and essentially reinvested back into the company. It's, it's kept in their possession, uh, includes owner's equity. Now, the reason it's a residual claim on assets is the meaning that anyone who is a liability holder, so a bond holder, holds some type of debt of some kind and is a non-owner, gets paid first, anything left becomes owner's equity. Owner's equity is commonly referred to as net worth of a company. Uh, because essentially it's everything that you own after all of your liabilities have essentially been paid for.